Hello. Welcome to our panel discussion, Digital-Led Operation Transformation and its Key Ingredients. I'm Anna Bitkuri, Head of Technology Modernization at ISG in the MIA region. Some of you may have already attended my previous session from Cloud to Edge, where we already touched a couple of aspects in this area. And now I would like to deep dive with you in the topic. I've invited two excellent experts dealing with digital transformation in, in manufacturing and operation uh, on the daily basis and uh, from both perspectives, business and technology. Pankaj Arora is based uh, in Ireland and responsible for business transformation in both operation and supply chain at PepsiCo, you know, the global food and beverage leader with a product portfolio of more than 20 brands. Even in Munich, Bavaria, where I'm based, we drink rather beer than Pepsi. I would like to, uh, to hear the uh, view uh, from the business side and productivity management provided by Pankaj. Rajat Sapawal is based in Amsterdam. His CTO of Sololeva and lead the solution portfolio for manufacturing customers. Pankaj, Rajat, would you like to introduce yourself with just a couple of words? Rajat, go ahead, yeah. <clears throat> so thanks, Anna, for uh, the brief introduction. Uh, and just adding a bit here, uh, Sololeva as a company is focused on providing manufacturing intelligence and connectivity solutions uh, to manufacturing vertical at large, uh, based at Amsterdam. And uh, we are pretty much an open source company. Uh, so we're, tr we're trying to bring the wave of open source for manufacturing, which uh, has been held, or rather, you know, held at ransom by proprietary thinking so far. Pankaj. Thanks, Rajat. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, I'm uh, Pankaj Arora. Uh, I'm part of uh, PepsiCo. Uh, you know, I've been uh, there eight years uh, over here. My core responsibilities has been around, uh, you know, starting from the Lean Six Sigma program, getting into operation transformation, and I think that's something which I've uh, which I've done significant and significantly as part of my career across not only Pepsi but before that with Accenture Consulting as well as uh, in the financial information space of Thomson Reuters. Me. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, good to have this background. Uh, well, um, we are speaking about manufacturing enterprises and uh, they are thinking about the topic of integrated supply chain um, and thinking about the actual manufacturing as a block in the context of, of the supply chain. The motive is clear is to have visibility and optimization of resources for material workflows and uh, utilization and also for uh, process KPIs. And such is try um, to tie the entire supply chain and manufacturing with the help of um, digital technology is a pretty difficult task. That's why I question to you, <laughs> Pankaj. So um, how are manufacturing organization approaching operations transformation in a business realm way without getting uh, deadlocked with technology related complexity? Um, sure, Anna. Um, and I'll, I'll answer this question in two, into two parts. You know, one, uh, one part is, you know, what's exactly driving this change? You know, what, why, what, what are the, what's, what's the change? Uh, and then what's our response as well? And I think if I, if I go for the first one, uh, uh, you know, there are, you know, and I think these answers are very generic across, you know, I, you know, within, uh, you know, very close to me, into me is food and bev, but I'm sure largely, I think the drivers are similar across different sectors, you know, different size, scale and geographies as well. Yeah. So the, 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 the four factors that are driving the change, you know, the first of them is, uh, is the custom behavior. And I think with all the demographics that is changing, you know, the awareness that people are actually having about the health, the safety, and, you know, long-term view of the environment, that is driving a significant consumer shift. That's one part. The second part is the whole, you know, the economic realignment that is that is currently actually happening. You know, uh, as 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 you know, we have seen, 
recessionary forces in the uh, in the in the developed economies and and a, and a very significant attractive growth that you know that that enterprises like our see in the fast growing economies where there are different consumers with different different with different tastes and preferences you know there is a whole new market that is emerging out for us you know adding in adding in challenges for us the third aspect you know has been the whole uh, you know uh, has been the influence that is coming in because of uh, from the government or from the lobby groups or or even you know even the blocks of of consumers as well uh, uh, you know social media be one of it is the whole space of regulation as well and i think especially when you look into the space of environmental you know environment health safety across and you know standards like iso and others become largely a norm across different industries you know the origination might have happened in one industry but the practices are getting deployed all across you know that is driving a significant change within us uh, and the fourth part actually has been and, and this is probably a composite of all what i said before okay actually has been the whole uh, increase in the supply chain complexity you know with different you know product varieties new ingredients that are coming into the system added added quality risk added compliance issues added adding you know uh, the uh, the risk that we that everyone wants to mitigate across has added significant complexity in the in the supply chain so that's the dimension around you know what is driving the change but if i keep on continuing yeah, so what's the response actually now again generally i think the three key strategies that manufacturing uh, uh, you know ma the manufacturing organizations are, are trying to work out with the first thing is the whole rethink around strategy and planning you know the old approach of optimization in terms of you know of uh, of improving the bottom line performance with, with different approaches that different you know organizations have to have taken you know they, it's running out of steam right now they they won't work i think it's a time that you know that we need to rediscover the strategy the planning and you know the all the you know how does everything of the key you know how the key ingredients of an organization in terms of you know the research development the engineering the sourcing the manufacturing all of them get together you know how do they coordinate to deliver what the customer wants in the landscape as as it's changing out you know i think that's where there's been big shift around uh, around these uh, around these lines and i think it it means different things for different companies for us it is a significant network or a, or a footprint change that we are seeing across you know for some of them it is about smart or network product as we see right now and somewhere as as we as as we see it across is the whole change of you know the core manufacturing technologies the the old one are are not so relevant right now and the core manufacturing technologies so the future are far more flexible far more agile than what we have seen that's the that's the first part of it the second part actually has been has been has been something which uh, which has uh, has expanded its scope has been the whole around the shift to services you know the manufacturing in in the distant past used to be a bit step away largely from the consumers and i think what we have seen is you know uh, the the aspect of servicing you know of there is no pure manufacturer everyone is a service provider that that is that is a mindset that is that is actually happening in right now and i think in the, in in manufacturing especially in the b2b space you know i think having you know uh, it service was a, you know was a differentiator that was established you know conversations conversations like uh, cost for ownership was was discussed established but we see that shift actually coming in the space of high volume uh, high volume business like ours which is in the b2c space as well and i think that will significantly change the way you know the way things get made they get moved around and the way it, it really the consumer consumes you know what we're intending to do you know so our intention is to make a pepsi you know another that you like across maybe it will have a flavor flavor of beer in it but that's the direction that we are going in <laughs> okay and largely across with all of them is uh, is that you know with, with with all these two factors innovation the way it was about being a product challenge is is irrelevant right now it's about the innovation of of the overall business you know it's about in you know, the whole economic model has to has to innovate which includes the uh, the elements of manufacturing supplying the supply chain elements and servicing also and i think this is where and i think our experience of digital is is the one that is is serving in that purpose of bringing bringing that connectivity and agility that uh, that was needed yes thanks a lot i recognize a lot of aspects you touched right now are well known a part of them are completely new uh one of the uh, new aspects is also the time we are living um in the middle and the pandemic terms so uh, the question to you, um, Pankaj, um, how it become imperative um, ever than before in the pandemic time? 
Sure. Um, see, I, I think for us, the pandemic has been, uh, when I say, uh, you know, has uh, from us from a business transformation side has been uh, has been a, has been a boon on many many parts of it. You know, plus has had challenges also. I think one big thing that we have seen is the acceleration of uh, of of technical solutions that probably were already existing, but you know, for all uh, all uh, for all different reasons, you never they never got uh, get never saw a light of the day. Yeah. So I think you know some about you know things like uh, like remote working, not for you know remote working for not only for office office people, but for uh, you know for a lot of manufacturing folks as well. You know so far we would assume that they need to have you know heads and shoulders on the ground. I think that that work has been challenged across. Technology existed, but it's piloted right now. I think the other part what we have seen is a significant increase actually, and we see going forward will become very critical for us is about close monitoring of all the resources. You know. The old supply chain rules, the old Kanbans are completely irrelevant right now. And I think the, with significant uncertainty and volatility that, volatility that we see, it's very important that we do a much more closer monitoring of uh, of uh, of our you know assets, you know, the machines, as well as as the people, you know, from a safety side of it. So that's something which has uh, which has gone uh, which did not exist, but it has gone much more. You know, the demand is, has increased significantly. And the last part, I think, which is most important, actually, has been, you know, continuing from the point where I said the supply chain have got extremely complex, and for us to supply, you know, to sustain those supply chain, I think it's extremely important for us than before is about the visibility and the transparency in the system right now. And I think this is where, uh, you know, we clearly see the need of of digital uh, and connected supply chains, you know, especially closely linked to manufacturing, becoming a key need for the future. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that sounds good and interesting. Um, now, thinking about the uh, digital um, digital led uh, instruments um, to improve it, uh, I thinking about all the buzzwords or technology. How do you want to 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 name it? Um, and I'm thinking about the edge computing, of course. Uh, IoT, but also about manufacturing data lake and uh, fork architecture and everything like this. Um, a, a lot, a lot of terms uh, if it comes to digital transformation. Um, in this regard, a question to you, Rajat, what is your view on this? And um, how would you put all these topics uh, related to the business outcomes? What is the really business value on it? Right, so uh, interesting choice of words there. Uh, I know you call these all as buzzwords, but you're right that uh, there would be industrial IoT, cognitive uh, analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, cloud-based data lakes. There are a lot of experimentations that are currently you know, going on in the uh, manufacturing vertical. Um, but when you put the uh, overall, uh, overall umbrella of business-driven KPIs on top of it, suddenly you find that uh, you know, uh, most of these initiatives are nothing but point initiatives. They are, they are just uh, being looked at uh, from the perspective of uh, solving a point problem or solving an issue with a very fragmented approach. Yeah, uh, it's a mistake that uh, organizations generally make that they build up their transformation programs, they uh, draw out the charters, the roadmaps for such programs, but uh, somehow and uh, generally uh, forget to put the technical bits in. And by that, I mean that the overall architecture and the overall strategy around technology also has to go hand in hand uh, for such programs to succeed. What, what Pankaj was mentioning about the entire gamut of uh, transformation from supply chain to manufacturing to distribution and so on, uh, manufacturing becomes a cog in this entire wheel. So that uh, entire wheel has to be uh, looked at in totality. Things like uh, you know improving visibility, let it be of processes, let it be of resources, KPIs like material efficiency, uh, overall equipment effectiveness, cost of poor quality, they have been talked about for a long, long time. Uh, however, they have to be backed up by a thought through strategy on the technology front. And that means, uh, for me, it means three things. One, you need to have a data strategy. Uh, the reason is very simple, that uh, most of the manufacturers have uh, grown through acquisitions. Um, so 
the plants that they have, the sites that they have tend to be very different from one another in the landscape. The OEN, the machinery, even the processes tend to be different. Hence, coming to some semblance of a base foundation where you know everything from naming of the data sets, so basically your data modeling, to going to uh, data acquisition strategy, going to the storage strategy, how you enrich the data, how analytics uh, gets applied on top. This has to be uh, coming together in your data strategy, to, uh, to put it very simply. The other two important facets are, what is your platform strategy? Uh, when it comes to OTIT integrations, uh, the world is far more complex as compared to plain, simple censoring and uh, IoT uh, implementations. The reason is that there's a lot of legacy involved here. So to get over that legacy, your platform strategy has to be very clearly thought through. If you're looking to deliver real-time use cases, if you're looking to deliver real-time analytics, it cannot be done over cloud because of latencies associated with it. So if you want actionable insights and if you want uh, actionable uh, you know, data sets and you want applications to run in a closed loop environment, you have to come with come up with some kind of a hybrid platform strategy where you have a very uh, significant edge portion in your strategy, uh, which is focused more on delivering value in real time to operators, to plant managers, to site managers, to quality control staff. So your general stakeholders and your uh, staff on, on the shop floor. When it comes to benchmarking, when it comes to reporting and dashboarding, that is something as a function that you can take to cloud. So quite clearly, if you are to form a holistic strategy uh, uh, in terms of delivering a digital transformation, it has to be done in multiple facets, what goes and sits on edge and what goes and sits on cloud. And this also has TCO implications because we know that when you come and uh, devise a generalist uh, data lake strategy, uh, the tendency is to push everything onto a cloud-based data lake and you have a lot of dark data coming in, data which you are pumping to cloud, but you're not utilizing. There's no use case on top of it. Uh, so the TCO, because of the way uh, business models are structured for, for cloud companies, you, you end up spending a bomb on these data lakes without getting any real value. So that's more on the platform side. And the last bit is more on the integration strategy. Uh, so it's not just about uh, integrating the uh, machines and the processes, it's also about integrating the business applications like ERPs, like warehouse management systems, your logistics systems and so on and so forth. So what is your integration strategy? And, and uh, a word that comes to my mind is of manufacturing service bus. We are used to seeing enterprise services, service bus implementation since uh, you know, early 2000s. But somehow the whole concept of uh, manufacturing service bus has been missed because of the fact that IT and OT used to sit in different pockets within the organizations. So uh, in, in short, if I were to say, uh, having a holistic uh, roadmap, marrying it with a techni technology uh, strategy and architecture is a must for one to achieve a total transformation. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sounds really, really interesting. And if I look uh, back at our experience digital transformation, um, we have seen that technology, but also project or um, process topics are not the only challenge in this area. So to be really successful uh, in this data-driven, as you said, uh, culture, we need, a, we need a really cultural change. We need to adapt this from the shop floor to the subfloor. And uh, for this, uh, we need a, a amount of change management and it's really a key factor from our point of view for uh, successful implementation of operation transformation. A question to you, Pankaj. Uh, from your point of view, uh, what are the cultural and also organizational barriers you see um, need to be resolved um, for process transformation? Sure, and it's very interesting. Absolutely, it's a, it's a very interesting question, and 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 I think a question that goes beyond uh, you know beyond multiple uh, um, school of studies that exist actually. Yeah, 
Uh, and I think if I start with the, you know, I cannot deny this fact that, you know, I think as as organizations start making their roadmap for uh, for process transformation, especially through digitization, I, I think the, the, the core question has to be answered is, you know, what are the core elements of its culture? You know, what are the core artifacts of its culture that it is ready to challenge across? And I'm talking about, you know, things like, you know, the general risk taking abilities in the organization, you know, things like, you know, where the decision actually happens, you know, what's the, you know, who makes the decisions across? What's the speed of decision making? You know, these are, are very, uh, are, are uh, you know, are not the written rules. These are not the written uh, documenting processes, but these are the core elements of any culture that has to be looked into. So as, as organizations figure out their, uh, their, uh, their roadmap for, uh, for transformation, I think you know, they need to they need to have a quick uh, have have a de have a much closer look at what elements of their core has to get redefined. So, you know, I think that that definition has to happen along with the with any form of digital or process transformation. If that is not going to change, and it, it's it'll it'll it's a it's a very clear recipe for disaster with a lot of frustration in, in the pro in the in the process by the time we we realize it. That's one. The second one for me is uh, has been the has been around you know with the, with, digitization, with digitization I think there is definitely an abundance of data that that I, that we for, that that I foresee across yeah and I think with with it with it comes the the whole question of democratization you know I think it's while well, democracy is absolutely mm. great it gives in you know you know with the right power with the right knowledge you know people will uh, will have uh, you know it'll enable you know decision. Um, where the action is actually happening, and and I think if that sits within the culture, and I think that's the that's the pace that organization is going, and I think that's that is where it will be extremely successful. But again, you know, um, there is a parallel world that exists across with with data. You create perception, especially when you have you know when the whole world of you know uh, there's a different world that calls out you know lies, lies, and damn stratosphere. So you know, it's very important that we really marry the two in terms of making sure that the data is visible to the right people who are accountable and, and answerable for taking the right actions at the right time. So I think that that is uh, that is you know that uh, democratization with the uh, with the visibility and the authority to act is uh, is something that uh, that has to be has to be preserved very well. And the third aspect, I think, is the is about the organization silos, and and I think uh, this is not only with the with digitization. I think it's about the way the the, the organizations are are changing as well. You know, and, and I think it'll come much more uh, with what do you say? You know, as as digitization actually happens, you know, there will be transparency in the new world where there has been has been opaques or silos. And I think it, this is where we really have to see, you know, how those silos have to be broken. To get the maximum or the best out of of all these digitization initiatives, otherwise, you know the um, the, um, the the you know the the returns will be extremely limited. Uh, plus, the chances of success will be very small as well. So, I think that's a whole organization that has to evolve from a silo into a. I'm sure the new there will be a new silo as well, but that silo will be much bigger than what it is <laughs> it is right now. Hope so. I hope so. Uh, sounds uh, well known, <laughs> my gosh. Yeah, so each organization has to find its own roadmap probably for change. Uh, there is no perspective way to achieving it. Um, question uh, to you, Rajat. Um, what do you think, how flexible the technology implementation need to be uh, to uh, to support this need of managing such a change successfully? You know, I, I completely agree with uh, what Pankaj uh, was just mentioning about uh, data being visible at the right level and to the people uh, that that matter. But at the same time, we have to uh, also agree with the fact that once you are designing your transformation roadmap, and, and let's be honest, information systems are political systems. Yeah, how you uh, build up your workflows, what data ownerships get assigned where has a long-term implication on, uh, on the entire uh, roadmap that you want to implement. So I completely agree with what, where I disagree is also the fact that uh, factories or sites are pretty much, you know, kingdoms in their own right. So while they are uh, part of a larger organization, but uh, the entire ecosystem of a factory pretty much is an enterprise in itself. 
So once you're looking at data enablement of um, the processes, uh, there is a fear of being put under the scanner as well. So where will my factory data land up uh, at, at, in which department, uh, who will have the uh, ownership or uh, viewer rights to this data, how this data will be interpreted. So if you ask your site manager or if you ask a operations person, the first thing that uh, he will show to you is resistance when you talk about such a change. Um, so technology uh, implementations from an architecture perspective have to take this into account that data custody and data rights are clearly articulated. And here's where the difference between edge and cloud again comes to picture. So what Pankaj was talking about, about uh, democratization of data, uh, if, if you're going on a cloud-based model, you are going for a centralized control model, wherein uh, the top floor or any, any segment within the organization can have access to that data. However, if you're looking at an architecture, which is a mix of edge and cloud, edge being under the custody or the edge systems, near edge systems being in the custody of the local site, which is uh, producing this data, um, they get the first right of ownership and they can decide from a reporting and dashboarding perspective what needs to be pushed to cloud and what, what data sets they will use for their own uh, uh, process improvement or for any kind of application analytics interventions that they want to design for the plant. So if you look at it from a, a you know a residence of data orchestration perspective, uh, this, this needs to be thought about. And uh, if you go for a, a, a hybrid approach, I think that this uh, entire problem of change management uh, from a fear perspective can be addressed um, to, some, to some degree. There are two other points. One is that um, when you talk about uh, digital initiatives, uh, there also has to be a part about digital initiatives being seen as a natural progression rather than an intervention. And if you see that and you're able to you know, Im embed that culture, then you can also provide career paths, alternate career paths to your operators, wherein they can be taught how to do uh, data crunching, data modeling, and you know, grow towards data engineering. This is, this is a model that Tata Steel worked uh, in uh, I Mutant Mutant plant very successfully with. And I've also seen uh, some examples of this in paints and coatings industry where the uh, data um, engineering and the data analytics design is actually being done by the operators or CI engineers or quality control uh, staff who have been uh, given these capsule courses on uh, data engineering. And, and then they start viewing it also as, uh, as uh, a natural progression and the acceptance is far higher. The third point, and, and, and I'll conclude on that, is that when we talk about digital interventions or digital transformations, um, we talk in terms of agile, right? The entire agile methodology being adopted for, uh, for uh, deployment of these solutions, development to deployment. However, agile is uh, an unknown animal when it comes to manufacturing, uh, especially on the shop floor. So what companies also have to think about that what kind of tool sets and what kind of uh, architectures, deployment architectures, uh, development architectures do they, or methodologies they uh, adopt? Uh, no clear answer there, but to take this entire uh, juggernaut onto a uh, agile kind of uh, uh, approach, it, it requires some thinking. So clearly, um, you know, flexible architectures, uh, flexible methodologies, and data custody and rights ownership is a must from a change management perspective when it comes to digital transformation uh, uh, through IT solutions. Thank you, Ajahn. It's, it's really fine, uh, interesting. Um, we have uh, just a, a short summary. Uh, the key ingredients would be rethink the strategy and planning. Um, work, uh, touch uh, the topic uh, like the change from manufacturing to service. Um, think about innovation and um, think about change management and also in other aspects we haven't touched right now, like continuous improvement. Um, I would like now to close our discussion. Um, unfortunately, we are end of time. 
thanks a lot for sharing your views uh, with us today. And um, I think we now are at the end and uh, all the listeners are already in the next, uh, in the next um, session. In case not, uh, thanks a lot for listening today. If you have some questions, please uh, reach, to out, reach to us later on and uh, come to our virtual booth to get into conversation.